Now we're going to jump into Matthew. This is one of the promises that God gives us here. This is in Matthew chapter 16. Verses 14 through 19. And this is where, where Jesus asked his disciples, who do the people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets, he said to them, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not, shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. So God's already promised that he would give us the keys to the kingdom of heaven, right? So if you have keys, then you have authority, right? Yeah. If you have the keys to unlock something, then you've got authority to enter that. Exactly. And that's what he promised us in this, in this verse here, that we have keys to the kingdom of heaven, and that whatever we bind in heaven is going to be bound on earth. And whatever we loose in heaven is going to be loose on earth. And that's, a, that's the type of mindset that we should have when we're speaking about situations that we have. We shouldn't be afraid, and I think that's maybe where we get where we get, uh, we get lost, we get uh, misdirected, is that we're afraid to bind those things. We're afraid to lose those things for fear that those things aren't going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> and that's where, the, that's where our rebellion comes into play, is that the Word has promised us over and over again. We know that we read previously that God is not a man that He would lie, right? So if He's given us His authority, then why are we worried about speaking these things into existence? We already know that the words, that our words have the power of life and death. We've spoken about that. We, need to, we don't need to go over that, that verse again. But how many times do we get into the mindset where we're thinking there's no way that this situation is going to come out on my behalf? There's no way that I'm going to be able to finish the work that I've, that I've started. There's no way that I'm going to get the promotion that I deserve. There's no way that, you know, that I'm going to make it through this trial or this situation. How many times do we get into that mindset that there's no way that we're going to make it. And so what we're doing is, you know, we speak these things forth, we bring it forth, and we're just binding ourselves to a curse. Because we know that the word has the power of life or death. And those things that we speak into our situations that I can't make it through this, I don't know what I'm going to do, I'm tired of this, you know, if it's not this thing, it's the other thing. If it wasn't for no luck, I wouldn't have any luck. By those words, we're binding ourselves to a curse. Mm -hmm. Because we've spoken that into our lives. Yeah. And that's where our mindset needs to change. And, and we need to stand on the authority that God's given us yes. to speak into existence that those things, those things that we want for our lives can and will happen as long as we continue to speak those things forth. Amen. And this goes exactly back to what Pastor's been saying. You know, this revelation of... The principles of love and, and rebellion, I mean, those are huge. Those have just been huge in my spirit because it all goes back to that. And, you know, he says it's a, it's a simple principle, the love, uh, the, the, the principles of love and rebellion. It really is. It really, really is. And I want to thank you, Pastor, for that because that's just totally changed my thinking about the way that, that I view the word, the way that I view my, my situation. Because I, now, you know, it kind of makes more sense and... You know, if I'm not seeing the manifestation of these things that I want for my life, it's not because God's withholding those blessings from me, but it's because of my rebellion to receive it. Amen. And I think we all get into that situation either more subconsciously we get into that situation where our rebellion doesn't allow us to receive the blessings that we have and, that he has in store for us because we're not willing to speak it forward and call those things forward. <laughs> That's why we have people begging for bread on, on Facebook and asking for more prayers and asking for additional prayers and continue praying and please pray for this situation where all we have to do is that person, all they have to do is get on their face and say, Lord, I bind this situation in your name. Amen.
We're going to get into another scripture here. This is in Psalms 91. Starting in verse 2. And it says, I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked, because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge. No evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up. <coughs> Lest you strike your foot against a stone, you will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him, I will protect him. Because he knows my name, when he calls to me, I will answer him. Hallelujah. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. You know, that moved me this morning when I was, when I, as I wrote that. Because, you know, I've said it before that, that my spirit's been really just weakened and troubled by, by the situation that, that we're going through with John. And that, you know, that I've just been praying for his situation and hoping that, you know, that my prayers would be, you know, would be sufficient to bring about the results that I want for that, for that, for that whole situation. Mm -hmm. And I have to just change my thinking. This is a, this is something that's, you know, invokes something in me to change my thinking and say, God, I just have to, I have to put it in your hands because I know that what your word says is that, he doesn't want for any of us to perish, right? He doesn't want for any of us to be uh, discarded or, or laid down or any of that. So there's no reason that I should be begging for bread for my son's, on my son's behalf. I just have to lay that down because as much as it, as much as it grieves my spirit, it grows, as much as it grieves me to see John out there in the wilderness, I have to know that God's will is bigger than my will. And that his ways are better than my ways. And whatever God has to do with John out there, that he's going to do it Amen. at his timing. Amen. And that we just sit back and wait for the fulfillment of what of God's will in that situation is. And I know that God has something better planned for John than I do. And all I have to do is sit back and wait and just glorify and, 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 the whole, and that whole situation will come to a head. So God has given us the authority to walk as victors in his kingdom as heirs of it. We're going to jump into another scripture here. This is in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, starting at verse 4. It says, For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God, that every thought, and take every thought uh, captive to obey Christ. <coughs> For the weapons of our warfare are not the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. And this is where we have to bind those thoughts that, you know, that we can't have the fulfillment of what God has in store for us. That's what it's saying here, that we have to keep, we have to bind those thoughts and put them into captivity and get out of the mindset that we're helpless victims, that we can't have the fulfillment of his blessings because he's already promised to us. He's already promised that to us. And so this is, this is like I said, when you, I've always told 
I always tell everybody when I when I do any type of message that you know typically when when these messages come about it's because something that I'm going through in my spirit and that you know that everybody else is just the audience to that. And so these are these are words that are that are girding me up because of my trials. Mark uh, chapter 13 verse 34 says, For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. That goes back to the authority we have. It's like, it's like a, a master who's left on a long journey and he leaves and he leaves everybody else in charge and says, you guys take care of the house. He's commanded us to make disciples of the world, right? So if he's commanded us to make disciples of the world, then what, what authority did he give to the disciples? <coughs> he gave his disciples the authority to heal, right? He gave his, his disciples the authority to cast out demons. And so if we're, if we're disciples of the true living God, then that's the same authority that we walk in. Amen. The authority that we can walk into a situation and we can speak to it in God's name and that we can, that we can cast out demons, that we can heal the sick, that we can change the, the, the circumstances around that situation, not through our might, but through the might of the word, through the might of God. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his word and commanded the porter to watch. That is Mark 13. <coughs> Chapter 13, verse 34. And so in Matthew 10, 18, it says, Jesus instructs his disciples to heal the sick and to cleanse lepers. For freely have you received, freely shall you give. What is the whole purpose of the church? Is a church to simply fill your spirit up, pick you up from the week that you've had? You know, pat you, uh, pat you on the back and wipe the dirt off your brow. Because I think we've gotten into this mentality that that's really all the church should be for us is, is a way that we can, we can refill our spirit. And that isn't the point of the church. That was, really never, that was really never the point of the church. The point of the church was to make disciples out of believers, right? And I think that's part of the problem, not, not only with this church, but probably with all churches, is that too many people aren't taking their, aren't taking their, their divine given authority and using it out in the real world to convert, to convert non-believers and people who are on the fence. Amen. And so if we're not doing this work of discipleship, then what are we doing? What are we doing as believers? You have to ask yourself that. What are you doing? Have you talked to anybody about the goodness that is Christ? Have you talked to any about anybody about what he's done in your life? Jesus instructs his disciples to heal the sick and to cleanse lepers. For freely have you received, freely should you give. That's Matthew 10, 18. In Luke chapter 9, <coughs> verses 1 and 2, he says, Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. So what are we doing? What are we doing that, you know, that Miss Marion uh, didn't come last week and there was nobody here last week to do the work? You know, if we're called to be disciples and we're called to preach, 
then when somebody is not here, there should have been somebody immediately. There should have been somebody here immediately to give the word last week. 